know you are as ghost. The following podcast is scheduled for five falls. Making his way to the microphone and introducing for the first time ever the man who knows little Gailsberg. <laughs> There we go, yeah, yeah. Giles, yeah. Now, now, now you're doing it. All right, all right. Um, Giles uh, has never watched wrestling. Nope. It's um, I. I have no clue. Um, I have very little idea. Like when I do my taxes, like when I watch the news, like when I do drugs. So we, <laughs> we can get that in post. We can get right? that. We can get that in post. Yeah, don't worry. That, that, that's. Good. I mean, that's no one fine. wants to know what you pay your taxes. <laughs> oh, <sure. laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh. Don't. I'll explain Gilesburg in a minute. But first, we're introducing his partner, the legend killer, Dandy Orton. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that rhymes. I like it. <laughs> All right, you're doing it. And now, weighing in at a cool three metric tons, <laughs> Shane, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. Oh, Hagen. <laughs> You'll get that in post. <laughs> The one bleep is going to have to be extended. Uh, the rain and I've never... Fucker. <laughs> uh, it's a long... It is animal. a long... Yeah, you can barely fit that on the bottom of the thing. Uh, Goldberg was a wrestler in WCW. And... Um, go, actually, going back and... Uh, going back on what we said in the last... Um, podcast where you said like oh do people kind of react to you know um, people leaving and the whole diesel effect diesel uh, razor moon effect razor moon um, Goldberg was in WCW and he was renowned for being bald angry and kind of hulking up where he would go I guess so as um, was the fashion of the time as so in WWE they had a guy called Gilberg which who was incredibly scrawny and uh, his gimmick was that whenever he was coming to the ring, um, you would see him in his in his locker room going, yeah! and then he'd walk to the ring just yeah! the whole time. And it would take maybe 30, 40 seconds for him to walk from the locker room to the ring. So instead of it being a kind of boom, he's coming out. It was just this slow, slow plodding walk <laughs> that was on the camera. Like, so the crowd were watching him and then he'd appear... Also, that, that, that sound there, I'm pretty sure I've heard that in Jurassic Park. That was, you know, that... <laughs> nah! Yes, of course, another famous um, gold bloom was in there. And say what you say what you want about the man, that can't connect. I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> good God. Great googly moogly. <laughs> uh, I'll say check it out on YouTube. There is a 10-hour video of this weird gold bloom laugh from Jurassic Park. Where it's like, oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> and it's just on a loop for 10 hours it is incredible that I will have to watch that that is only um, only could probably narrowly beat the 10 hours of uh, Nigel Thornbury going Mars smashing <laughs> Nigel Thornbury voiced by Tim Curry Tim Curry yeah good Dan has never fucking Dan has never seen a Rocky Horror Picture Show. I have not. There are no words. I'm afraid it's too late to <laughs> watch it, though, isn't it? I think, like, because I didn't catch it when I was young, I think if I just watch it now, I'd be like, this is... If you watch it now, yeah, you'd be like, this is bad. But if you actually take it, like, tongue-in-cheek, understanding that it's going to be bad, go into it, you'll have a fucking wheel of a time. And also, you can re-watch things and get all the jokes. And also, it's... Uh... O'Brien. Mm-hmm. Richard O'Brien. Richard O'Brien. Richard, Richard, Richard wrote, O'Brien it, wrote it. Acted. Performed it. Yeah. He wrote that. Oh, yeah. Ah. Him and right. Columbia, I think. Is it Columbia? The, the girl. Really? Yeah, they were, I'm pretty sure it was both of them. All right. We're on uh, It's Time, 96, which is the final PPV of 96. It's Time, of course, is Vader's catchphrase because his famous phrase was It's Time, It's Time, It's Time for Cocoa Pops or whatever. He's um, Vader, not a lot of people know this, Swiss. So time, very important to them. The Swiss language doesn't have much in the way of grammar, so time is really important. A lot of people um, have perfect um, like uh, tuning, perfect, perfect pitch. pitch. Uh, he had perfect yeah. time. 
And uh, I do hear that he, uh, due to his uh, love of the uh, very complex concept of time, has a specially made Rolex with uh, just very specific times on it for him. Yes. Time, time for pain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Time to kill, a time to be born, a time to be free, bedtime. a time to laugh. Bedtime. <laughs> Vader bedtime. <laughs> No, no. Mum, dad, bedtime. Then two hours later, <laughs> Vader, secret bedtime. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> secret ba- Vader time. Vader bedtime. Nine o'clock. Mum, dad, bedtime. Ten o'clock. And then there's just like three or four <laughs> hours. It's like secret Vader bedtime. <laughs> Vader, time to read Golden Era Superman comics. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> just 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 stupid. <laughs> With a flashlight. <laughs> with with, a, with, a, with a, a blanket on him like a cape. Yeah. <laughs> just a huge hulking mask sitting uh, in the bedroom. Vader, are you in bed? Uh, what? I know you're reading them bloody comics. <laughs> I can see the light underneath the door. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> What's Vader's real name? I don't know. It should be Vader. <laughs> Fucking Larry or something. <laughs> um, we'll, look, we'll, we'll look that up in post. Um... Anyway, yes, yeah, so, so the first match of It's Time is, which funnily enough, fucking Vader is not in. <laughs> He's not in his own fucking PPV. He's not even after him. Right. It's like Smackdown when The Rock didn't turn up for Smackdown. It's like, what the fuck? The Rock didn't turn up for Smackdown? Or whenever, you know. Does that make it just down? Yeah, it should be just down then, isn't it? Yeah, that's a bit. Well, it was like the first time he didn't turn up, we were all down about it. We were like, oh, the, oh, the Rock's not here. Um, so yeah, the first match is Flesh Funk versus Leaf Cassidy, otherwise known as Al Snow. If you remember Al Snow, probably not. Alan, uh, Alan Snow. Alan. Alan, would you stop with your head jokes? <laughs> and uh, we're starting at zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds on the DVD. And we're starting... It's day oh, zero. God. <laughs> From zero to hero... I never get over these the, the these items. Oh, imagine the money this must have cost. We're not doing free for all as well, are we? Well, hello, West Palm Beach, Is that Vince? No. That was probably the biggest hello I've ever heard. Oh, fucking hell, who is this talking? This is not good. Is this Vince? Happy Xmas, I love that. Just like, <laughs> Happy Xmas, guys. It's very nice of you, thank you. Listen, I know it's going to get pretty violent later on, but uh, no harm in saying it. I love you guys and happy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Just thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for coming. Whenever I went to the one Metallica concert that everyone in Ireland went to, <laughs> yeah, it's true. I think every yeah. one of our fucking generation was there and yes. had slain the previous or following year. Yeah. Oh, there he is. There's Jim Ross. Oh, oh. It's, it's the best balls he had in there, has it? I reckon so. Oh, oh, there we go. That's superstars earlier today. <laughs> yeah. Shawn Michaels jumping out of an ice bucket. <laughs> I see the Psycho Sid is wearing jeans. This is clearly, it's, he's been, clearly been disturbed on his day off. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's good to have a day where I don't have to worry about defending the title. I'm just going to go eat some candy floss. Uh, maybe shoot a couple of them ducks. See if I can win a teddy bear for my wife. Exactly. She'll love that. She'll love that. Maybe I'll be allowed to sleep in the big bed today. <laughs> <He's>, yeah, <laughs> she's really annoyed at him at the minute. <laughs> Um, and if I'm really good, she'll make some of her homemade lasagna, and it's 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 just gonna it's gonna be fine. Gumbo! <laughs> Everybody loves gumbo. No, she's Sean Sh- Sh- Michael's got an awful lot of attitude about him, doesn't he? Oh, there's Fabius Freebird, Michael Hayes. Look, it's at a hell of a tie, isn't it? Uh, uh, and the jacket, it's questionable it, it's, it's like a, an LSD trip in a suit <laughs> you know who I am I'm Shawn Michaels there he is so we were promised a match and there's just an awful lot of talking and this, this is something you'll have to get used to because fucking hell later on they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk don't they oh they sure do it's just promo after promo after promo and 
a lot of the times it's just this kind of like, how hard are you going to hit him? I'm going to hit him pure hard. So hard. How, if just, out of 10, Likert scale, mm, so mm. Just between 1 to 9 on the Likert scale. 1 being not at all, 9 being death. And you reckon if you just left him talking, they'll end up just getting into it. And that's why I think uh, full fiscal auto- autonomy is a very good idea. <laughs> <It'd> be better. <laughs> yeah, the guy doing the interview doesn't say anything. You know that thing where there's like silence yeah. and the other guy is just going to keep speaking. Yeah. Come back to him in an hour, it's like, Dad wasn't around much, i got to be honest. <laughs> he's, smoking. Start yeah. he, he's, he's smoking as well. You know, like, <laughs> Fucking Shawn Michaels, where'd you get a pack of cigarettes <laughs> from? You know, and Maybe yeah. that's why I act out. I suppose it could be that. Exactly. I'm saying all you have to do is, if you put some stock cubes in that, you've got a studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, that's, it's crying, talking about Dad, and then coming back an hour later, it's like, so I said to him, you're not just going to throw that out. We've got some stock in the back. <laughs> An hour later, it's pretty economical. I think I could drive something a bit better, but I mean, it's not just about the car, you know. There's a sentimental value here. I think it goes further. It's like, uh, well, I suppose the United States nuclear policy is a source of condition. (laughs) An hour later, it's like, unilateral support for Israel, however, is a different story. I don't know if that's making them or us any friends. I know that I shouldn't jump in on this fucking joke train because you're doing a really good fucking job, but I am going to be completely unoriginal. And it just it, when it comes back to him later on, he's like, "And that's why Teen Wolf is the best movie ever." <laughs> <laughs> is that Tracy Jordan? Uh, Tracy Jordan, yeah. Tracy Jordan saying two two serious things and one funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh... <laughs> oh, hold on. You know what? Because. Yeah, because it's free for all. Actually, we are not going to start with uh, Flash Funk versus Leaf Cassidy. Is that Dwayne, start... Dwayne the Rock Johnson. It's Dwayne the Rock Johnson versus Salva, uh, Salvatore Sincere he is with Jim Cornette. Young. Yeah, yeah. Well, is he, like... st- he still looks. He's... Oh yeah, he's still. Oh, he's cut that hair though, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, that hair is. Um, that's <laughs> that's not a good look. Uh, that hair. Yeah, oh, yeah. So uh, ap- apologies. I'll certainly never get the first match wrong. Ever again. Probably. Um, God forbid I do some fucking research on it. But, uh, yeah, so this is free-for-all. So what they do, Giles, would be before... I think we've talked about this before. If not, then, you know, birds repeating. Um, before the matches, and before the, the PPV would actually start, they had a dark match, mm-hmm. maybe one or two, to kind of get the crowd all hyped up. And then they'd have a free-for-all, which was televised, um, but it was free for anyone to... Okay, case keep flipping up the fingers. Did you see that? Televised for anyone to watch, and uh, and once free for all's over, then the actual PPV is, would start. So this would be your ten minute preview, where they'd be like, "If you come and give us the money, then you can see more of this," and it'd be kind of like you know, free advertising, I suppose. For so this is um, this is pre the PPV. This is yeah. Now what they do is they have what's called the kickoff show, which is they have a match. Um, they just televise the dark matches. There's no dark matches, and. Uh, it's it's a it's it's normally people who aren't going to draw a big crowd. And no one really cares about. Um, sometimes what they do is that they for the lower card they'll make a big deal. Like has he got a fucking earring? Has the rock got an earring in? Yeah, it would fit with the earring. The earring. Ear. Other other sideburn there, Rocky. God, nineties. Jeez, he oh. looks he looks like Macho Man. Not rock, um, Salvador Sincere. Well, that's that's a very bold shade of pink. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's uh, he's really gone for it. Yeah, and that's quite. Ooh, uh, and that, that's what we like much. to see. He says, "Yo, I'm gonna wear pink," and you know that's that's just how it's gonna be. It's all <laughs> right with me. There's not really much room for subtlety in this <laughs> uh, in this wrestling business. I think. <laughs> Oh, there I go now, Jesus Christ on me, dog. Oh, God on me, he's looking at me. Was that sort of a, a nigger move? Because uh, the ref jumped right in there. Touched is, the ropes. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's quite the mullet that he has there. He, he really does business in front, party in back. He maybe, could. Maybe, I think maybe he could uh, ease off on the party in just a little bit. Oh, fuck, that was great. What's Jesus. the 90s? The 90s was constant party. <laughs> Although ever so slightly less than the 80s. And the 60s, well, that was just party at infinitum. The Par- party at observing <laughs> ad diabolicum <laughs> ad absurd that's good I like it I like it a lot write that down this is gold write it down 
It's, fuck, this is good chain wrestling, I can tell you that much. Oh, fuck that, man. You shouldn't point a finger at someone like that. Oh! And then it's like, that's bloody that, rude. That. God, good stuff. Oh, he's got him in the eye, I think. Do you think that maybe, like, back in the 60s, um, Andrew WK... No, no uh, time to celebrate, my friend. Andrew WK would have, like, gone back in time there to help them party. Yeah. I'm from the future. I'm here to show you how to party. Yeah. There's Pulls a, pulls out a ghetto blaster. <laughs> <laughs> a boom box. <laughs> puts it on his shoulder. This is Run DMC's finest album. Oh. Learn to love it. <laughs> Whose house? Run's house. Sing it with me. Whose house? Run's house. <laughs> He's. Uh, I could just. It, the, the, the room going quiet is like. Okay, maybe you don't like this, but your kids are gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a young Robert Z- uh, Zamex there going, that's genius. <laughs> and, and, oh, he's up. He's not tolerating that. Fuck, the, well, ra- what, the Rock's, wow, doing, a lot. Yeah, the rock's was... doing an awful lot of moving about here. I like this. That's I like... He jumped right. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, oh, there we go. I mean, like, fuck. That's, uh, for a man of six foot five, that, uh, that kind of nip-up thing is quite... Yeah. yeah it's... What, six, six, five, two, seven, five, is he? Is that it? I'm oh. pretty sure that was what the Rock used to wear. Like, they're, like even... Even there, like, The Rock was a big man. I love how he's just holding him. He's just sort of casually there, like, come on, get it over with. Get it, you know, just get yeah. it. He's just, you know, casual. Well, the, the, you know, that would probably be their point whenever they have a wee chat and decide what to do next. Um, especially if they're going for, like, a quick finish, which I don't know whether they're going to be going for a quick finish or not. I mean, I'm... oh ho! <laughs> An Armageddon rules match. Yeah, the guy at the bottom looks like he's not exactly sure where he is. <laughs> That's the executioner. <clears throat> he looks like actually someone you see walking yeah. around Castle Bar. He he looks like he's like, is that camera on by him? Yeah. Like he's just been caught with his hands in his trunks. <laughs> the, kind of, <laughs> yeah, the, kind of, the kind of fellow who, if you're in a pub and you walk by him and it's busy and you accidentally touch him and some of his beer goes in his hands, like, you fucking starting with me, are you? <laughs> no, it's just, it's really busy. Buy me a new pint or I'll kill you. Oh. What a what a Oh the, look at that. Is that him there? That's him there. I hope someone hasn't bumped into him. Jesus, he looks awful angry, doesn't he? Who's he's got the, he's got the thumbs up though, you know, so he's he's having a good, <laughs> he's having a good time. Who's the gentleman to his right? What? The... To to his right? That's mankind. Oh, oh right. And to his left is Paul Bearer. <laughs> it's hard to imagine Paul Bearer actually doing any real kind of a work work in the mortuary. He just seems like just a very unprofessional. That's... Yeah. I mean, if I if I lost a, a loved one, um, I wouldn't be happy with that level level of support. No, or, or lack thereof. He he has two sons though. Yeah, but I get the feeling they'd be like him. And they'd be bothering you every step of the way, and it'd just be like, you know, I'm trying to grieve. So maybe because we've paid you guys enough for this, you pick where the flowers go. You've done this before. And, like my dad is gone, and you're just on me. <laughs> so I just. <laughs> You know, maybe we can go to someone else. I hear I mean, Chris Mannion does a good humour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, like, my father's already dead, um, and it seems like he wants to die again because <laughs> you're doing such a bad job. <laughs> Listen, uh, by the end of the day, I know what your fucking business plan is. By the end of this, you want two funerals on the go. One for my dad and one for you whenever I fucking slaughter you. <laughs> And it's going to be cheap. Oh, Jesus, look it's at the rock. He's doing a mad dance. It's going to be cheap, cheap. yeah. <laughs> Fucking plywood box, you huh? cunt. Plastic flowers. <laughs> oh, brilliant power slam. Who, who is the gentleman in the, the pink... Uh... Uh, Salvador Sincere. Oh. Do I, don't, I do not believe that is his birth certificate. <laughs> or his birth... I don't, I don't believe that's his real name, but I'm getting... I think what we'll have to do um, is speak to our birth certificate expert, Donald Trump. <laughs> 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 he also has a plan. I want to get rid of all those Samoans. And windmills. We'll launch them into space together. <laughs> he is... Uh, Jesus. He's some guy. Tommy Gunn, or the Patriot, is what he's known as. You see, I really hope that um, you know his last attempt to you know, save America was he was fired out of some sort of, you know, Bombay or missile chamber <laughs> into a war zone. 
<laughs> That's the last we oh, ever heard of the happened? Patriots. What happened? They was, they was watching. Yeah. They, he, he gave him the running shoulder breaker, and then oh, Jim okay. Is that a tennis racket? Yeah, Jim Cornett uh, brings in a tennis racket. It's a serious, uh, he's a semi-pro. Jim Cornett is a tennis player. Why I made not? that up. <laughs> you well, so it's genuine, believable. Though. It's believable. Yeah. I think. Yeah. If, if it, They've never really explained the, the, the tennis racket. Not thing. not in this. Again, uh, we have not done an awful lot of research for this. We can't do research on the characters here and there. I mean, but, uh, yeah, we have... We, it hasn't been explained, basically. So I can look up why he's got the, the tennis racket. Um, it would be great if it was like, oh, when he was young, he was semi-pro or ranked... I think what they should do is just increase the absurdity of the props each week, so it gets to like so the, the fi- final match, and someone's got like a sedan chair. <laughs> well, I'll just pause oh, that there. He's gonna hit him. He's gonna hit him with that ottoman. Uh, <laughs> well, it's it says here that um, his original purpose was to protect himself from rowdy and unruly fans with a tennis racket. Yep. Yeah, because he was very good at railing up the crowd, which is fair enough because the man's a psycho. <laughs> You know, oh, he's a great guy. I love Jim Cornette, and I and I, I I hit that that watching him back in the in the nineties makes me hit him. And then and then I watch him now, and I go, oh, "Fuck, you're great, Jim Cornette. You're just a great laugh." And so, do we know what age the Rock is here? Because he's really obviously quite young. So in this, uh, the Rock would so have like been 20. early. No shit, no early twenties. Yeah, early twenties. Good grief. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So. Uh, and he he played. Um. I think he played college football for yeah, Florida. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Which is, Which is obviously in the states is obviously a big thing. It's uh, yeah, I've I've met enough people who say that they would rather watch the the college football any day over the NFL. It's like they go into crazy ape shit about the the college football. Yeah, I've I've heard it's uh, it, it's most uh, most uh, most intriguing for the second best tertiary education system in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Do, uh, Dwayne Johnson uh, was born in seventy two. Wow. So at this point, um, he would have been 24. Wow. Yes. Or just about 24. What a guy, though. I love him. I think he's great. Oh, he's, I mean, even his, his work these days, he's managed to transition from, well, he's I think, still wrestling, but also your film roles, and uh, he's quite active on social media. I mean, he has a, yep. a big fan base outside of wrestling. He's... I... I will cite him... As one of the reasons I watched wrestling for so long. Because although I love wrestling now, I love wrestling without The Rock, I don't think I would have continued watching it if it weren't for The Rock. I think that his mic skills were amazing. He, he just, he seemed like a nice guy. He seemed like the type of guy that you'd love to just hang out with, you know, and maybe, maybe have a good old hot chocolate with. Um, <laughs> He yeah he, he he seemed like just a, a great guy and to the point where whenever he was crass and rude I didn't really enjoy it that much because it's like oh you're better than this rock because I've seen him being interviewed um, and like people continually say that he's the nicest guy. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. I saw something uh, on the internet it was, uh, for for Mother's Day and it was Rock's tribute to his mum. Yeah, which yeah, was um, lo- which was lovely. She. Uh, she attempted suicide. Oh right. She um, had such a hard life. And um, yeah, and yeah, I saw that as well. Yeah, and that was the first time that that had been revealed that she'd attempted suicide, and the fact that he was so, you know, good to her and all that was great. Like he, um, he's a great guy. I love Dwayne Johnson, and he is fantastic in anything he turns up in. He and and the thing is, like I think that he, he's, Stone Cold Steve Austin probably sold the most merchandise, but I think The Rock probably sold the most cinema tickets. Oh, that's uh, that's yeah. true. I, I don't mean, think the mummy would have been as popular if it weren't for doing the rock Johnson. The mummy too. Uh, th- that's true. It's. Yeah. Um, I think he pretty much carried that film <laughs> for his ten seconds oh, that he was in it. Yeah, yeah. I, Brendan Fraser, be damned. damned. And also, um, I saw him recently on a post of a San Andreas. Yes. Him, like, I don't know what it's about. Um, but yeah, that's some sheer tectonic activity right there. Yes, it's, it's uh, doing it's, the it's, yeah. Well, he is the rock. Oh, that, that is true. See, I didn't realize that connection. That is that is a prime connection. He's right ringing there. up his cousin um, Crust and Magma. Magma. Magma, and, uh, Magma yeah. and then at the end, he finally achieves his dream of becoming a geologist. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's in. Have you ever have you ever seen um, a TV show called Reno Nine One One? 
No, I, I know of it, but uh, I haven't Fuck, seen that. It's so. amazing. It? He's he's amazing. It? Like, um, he turns up in the movie, and what happens is the the premise of the movie is that there's a huge police convention in Miami, and it, all these people from all around the world get invited to Miami to go do it, and the Reno Sheriff's Department goes there, and they're the main characters, and they're they're just it's kind of like cops if it's <laughs> if it was a comedy, you know, um, and they get invited and. Um, Patton Oswald, I think it's Patton Oswald. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Patton Oswald. Loses their tickets, so they don't get in. So instead, they'll club in. Uh, and the next day, there's a, a bioterrorism attack, and all of the cops in the United States are basically out of commission. Wow. And yeah, and, and the guy that's there is just like, "Is anyone here a police officer?" And all these idiots put up their hands, <laughs> and it's like, "Jesus Christ!" And then boom, Rock turns up, right, and he's wearing like the full like u.s military outfit wow and, yeah, I, I have to watch this this and, is oh no it's it, it it's like i won't ruin it for you but it's him after I, once once he goes away i stop watching the film like i i when i rewatch it i'll watch it up to that because that's generally my favorite bit oh so it's a film not a series it is it's both oh right but the reno 911 miami is oh. is the is the film and he turns up about 20 minutes in and then after that, after that is actually the best bit of the movie because the whole the whole point of it is that they're all brilliant improvisers and they'd be in the car and they get told, right, listen, you're going to turn up to this place and there's going to be a cross burning in the front yard. Go, but they won't get told anything else. So they turn up at this address and there is a cross burning in the front yard and there's a bunch of guys in KKK outfits. So whenever they turn up and try to talk to them, they don't know what they're going to say. They don't know what what's going to happen, you know? That's brilliant. And they just they just improvise the whole thing. And there's there's sometimes where there's like wee gimmicks where like, you know, scripted things will obviously happen, but the rest of the time it's all just them just riffing off each other. It's fucking class. That's that's what that's some of the, the best things I like about well, the best things I like about comedy. I mean it's um, something in Scrubs. Apparently, the Neil Flynn, who plays the janitor, yeah. ad libbed every one of his lines. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, it's just thrown out there. Mm. Like oh. he, he ta- uh, talks about, uh, he gives uh, JD a pair of shorts. He goes, "Yeah, my mum made them." It's like she had a tough time doing so. She's only got you know like a pinky and a thumb. It's like a crab woman. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what is it there? Drill fork, drill and fork. Mostly fork. fork. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was something else I was going to say. I was about reading number one. Oh yeah, the opening. The opening has Danny DeVito in it. Wow. And uh, yeah, and this is before it's always sunny. So this is before he became kind of back into the public eye. And uh, it's it's kind of showing like this apartment block that's under siege, you know. And then they all turn up and they all like it's coming from a helicopter and they're all wearing their black leather, you know. And uh, they're like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to have snipers here and here and here. And we're going to have this. We're going to have this. And Junior, you can shave Miss Miami. <laughs> and Miss Miami's just there, you know. And, and Junior's like, okay. So he starts putting the thing. And there's a this awkward pause. And it's like, why is Miss Miami here? And Danny DeVito's like, why do we have to shave her? And <laughs> Junior wakes up in the camera. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. I had a nightmare. <laughs> Drifted off there. And Douglas is like, Aren't you driving the car? It's like, Fuck! <laughs> and there's a, just a sequence where he smashes through all these things, and he hits a porta potty, and he's gripping onto the and the wheel like this. And D- Dangles just like looks back and goes, "It's okay, there was no one in it." And that's it. And that's like the start of the movie. That's the first ten seconds of the movie. It's fucking great. Uh, anyway, Jesus, that match. We talked about that. I think I I'm, I'm gonna fire my two cents there. I think The Rock was fucking amazing. I think that he was. It was athletic. It's nice to see a good side to him. And he, he seemed to be enjoying himself. He was getting it all out there. There was barely a rest hold. There was barely a moment lost. He was obviously, because his dad's a wrestler, because of his grandfather's a wrestler, he wanted to show that he wasn't just a pretty face and he wasn't just this guy who's coming in on, on someone else's coattails. How he became so hated for such a long period of time after this, I don't know. But uh, I loved it. I mean, I agree. Um, I I was impressed. It was it was very quick. I thought well, he was very quick in his moves. Um, he was he was very focused. It wasn't just you know like there wasn't you know showiness. There was a confidence about him, but it wasn't you know sort of you know um, a lot of sort of posturing. It was very much sort of on the ball, trying to win the match. And also um, from that performance, I mean, just that performance alone, um, I I wouldn't hate him. I'm surprised to hear you say that uh, he was hated for such a long time. Well, later on, um, and it might. 
become a bit more obvious um, once we get into the 1997, 1998. But for a while, maybe about a year, mm. he was. They were pushing him as a baby face. Um, so a good guy. And the the crowd just were not having it. And they just did yeah. it at the wrong time. If they'd done that a year earlier, they'd have been like, ah, oh, this is so great. But like, I think the audience was starting to get an appetite for something a bit more angry and dark. Mm-hmm. And then they just push out someone in this kind of a template of happy and, ah, he's really good. He never, my God, he'd never cheat. Yeah. Anything like that. And they were just like, ah, shut up. Get yeah. him out of there. I think it was also because... Did they put him up against Stone Cold? Oh, I don't know. That would have been a mistake. I'm pretty sure they put him up against Stone Cold. Stone Cold was being pushed as a heel, but the crowd loved him. So the hatred of of Dwayne The Rock Johnson was fan generated. It wasn't part of the. No. Yeah. No. You're right. They wanted yeah. to use him to sell merchandise. What? They were like, "This guy's going to be a money maker," and they're like, "Why are they booing him every week?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he seems. I mean, he seems not only a sort of good athlete, but also if you I mean, he just seems like a nice guy. Decent yeah, he, he does, yeah. He looks like a nice guy now. You know, back in the day, he, he just had attitude. Like, um, He actually has his own PPV. Rock Bottom. Rock Bottom, yeah. Which was his own, just in the same way that It's Time is Vader's PPV. I well, he turned up in his one, I think. Yep. Yes, uh, in fact, I think he had a, I think he had a um, an intro where he uses, if you smell what the rock is cooking. Mm. And he didn't, originally it wasn't like a, like it, it was a, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. <laughs> it was that, it was that type of thing, you know, where, where he'd say something you went to me, he goes, if you smell it, I'm cooking. And, and then he'd go on, so it wasn't until later on that it actually became this, if you smell, you burn the rock, we is cooking. Oh, so I, this was, oh, no. So I just so you know, if he has the line, if you're, if you smell what I'm cooking, he could do a great uh, set with Martha Stewart. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, I'm glad you asked, Ma- Ma- Martha. What I'm cooking is a light tagine. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had a brilliant bit during the Rock and Sop connection whenever he was with Mankind. Um, and this is a six-minute match, by the way. As this talk is talking almost half an hour. Um, where the Rock brought on like an it's, it is, it's your life type thing. And he brought on his old home economics teacher. The Rock's old home economics teacher. And the Rock was like, you definitely smell what I'm cooking. And then there was like a pause of the crowd with laughter. Says, "You know your roles, right?" <laughs> it, was, it was really good. That's that's inspired. You were going to say something, Dan? Oh, I can't remember now. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. I was thinking more when they told Vader about this pay per view. Seems like a Vader. We've got good news and bad news. We're going to name a pay per view, and your your uh, gimmick is your your kind of catchphrase is going to be the linchpin of it. Great. Bad news is you are not going to be in it. Seems really shit. I don't know so. what. It seems really odd for, to have a PPV um, with his catchphrase and just not have a movie. It's just disappointing the fans. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, um, D Generation X also had one and they didn't really have. I think at this point it was. It's time came from Vader, but it also, like, it's time could have meant anything, you know. Mm. They tried to probably make it like. Um, like a double entendre type style of thing. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know. Like, like bear in mind that they didn't, they, they used to never actually call their PPVs anything. In really? fact, yeah, they used to just be called In Your House. And so it was WWF In Your House. And it would just be a longer kind of session. But uh, then they started naming them after, like, oh, this is In Your House Fatal Four Wear. This is In Your House Revenge of the Tiger. And it just spun out of control when they actually turned up at someone's house. Yeah, and, well, uh, yeah. The insurance data damage was, who. Oh, the yeah the the, the the Titan Tron is replaced with the house you, oh. yeah and that's not a joke you can actually an see actual yeah in, in fact let's see if we can if we can get a, an image of it um, I can imagine that happening somewhere so uh, excuse me uh, yeah why what are you huh? so we're wondering where we can set the ring up okay. yeah that, <laughs> excuse me that <laughs> yeah we're gonna have about twenty thousand people here in a, in a couple of hours we really need to get moving I should I should probably move that sofa then <laughs> so there you can see that there's we're a gonna house. need to knock this wall through <laughs> uh, there it is there. Oh wow! It is. You're right. It's an actual yeah, yeah, house. house. Yeah, uh, and that's where they used to come out of. So there was also a game in your house, which was PlayStation One. I think so. Yeah, definitely, definitely PlayStation One. Yeah, I don't even think it was on the N64. Anyway, so that's that's the first match of WWF in your house, the final PPV of two thousand sorry, two thousand nineteen eighty six. The next match is supposed is supposed to be Flash Funk and Leaf Cassidy, and I'm pretty sure it is Flash Funk and Leaf Cassidy, and that is coming up next 